Hello, my name is Ed Kammerer. I'm the Director of Global Product Management here at OPW Retail. And today we're in Smithfield, North Carolina at the facility where we make all of our FlexWorks equipment. If you're watching this video, then we've probably already sold you on how great the loop system is. Uh, you know that it is the industry's most maintainable, accessible, testable, and the easiest uh, accessible system that there is. And you are now at the point where you're ordering this great system for one of your customers. The, uh, the problem that we have is, although it's the easiest system to install, it may not always be the easiest system to order, especially at the beginning. There's a lot of part numbers and it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, and what we're gonna do today is show you an easy way how to determine what the proper part number is for that loop sump. As you know, each loop sump comes manufactured in our plant with entry fittings already installed, impact valves installed, stabilizer bars in installed, but as we build them on the line, we need a way to know how to correspond that particular sump to your specific job. We need to know where three plus one products are, where the unleaded line is, where the premium line is, so we know how to configure that sump as we're assembling it. And the way we do that is with a dedicated part number for that specific loop sump for your specific loop job. Now, there is a loop ordering brochure that you can either order online or get from one of your local district managers, or also on the website, if you go to the product page, uh, when you click down on the loop sump, there's a tab that says downloads. If you go there, you'll see a loop ordering brochure, and that'll kind of walk you through the process. Um, uh, again, this is probably one of the biggest questions we got is, I'm not sure if I've ordered the right part number, or someone will order the right part number, the sump shows up on the site, then we get the phone call, hey, this isn't configured the way that we had the drawing set up. So, before you order the loop system, what you need is either an engineered set of drawings that has the tanks laid out so you see where each individual product tank is located and then where those individual product lines are going to be drawn in those dispensers. Or if you don't have an engineered set of drawings, it could be drawn on a bar napkin. Just something telling you where the product lines are going to be based in those sumps and you also need the confirmation from who's ever going to be running the pipe, the uh, petroleum contractor or whoever is going to be doing this job. Make sure you double check with them, show them your bar napkin drawing, and make sure that they agree that yes, this is where my unlead line is gonna be, and this is where my premium line is gonna be. Once you know that, everything else will fall into place. So you're at the point where it's time to order your part number for the loop system. And when people first look at those part numbers, they get a little intimidated because there's a lot of numbers, a lot of digits in there. But as I'll show you, we'll walk through, it's actually pretty easy to configure that number, which will be specific to the sump that we're gonna build out in the plant. The, the part number has four components to it. Basically, the first part is going to tell us what type of sump, whether it's going to be poly or fiberglass, the type of entry fitting, and the type of coupling that's going to be used in the system. The second part of the part number is going to tell us whether it's inch and a half or two inch pipe. And then the third part is going to tell us what model dispenser the sump is going to be. And then finally, the fourth part of the number is going to tell us where to position entry fittings and how to configure the impact valves, whether it's a termination or a pass-through in the sump. So we'll walk through, show you how to build those numbers. So the first number with the loop system always starts with a DSL. Pretty simple, easy to remember, dispenser sump loop. So a DSL would be a basic poly loop sump, okay? The next configuration could possibly be a DSL. LF. That tells us that it's a fiberglass loop sump. Dispenser sump loop fiberglass. Okay, so those are the two configurations for the material in the sump. Now we'll talk about uh, um, couplings with the system. There's basically two couplings that we can use with the system. You can use the DPC coupling, which is our standard swedge on fitting for either the inch and a half or the two inch or you can use our SB coupling, which is the bolt-on male thread with the NPT thread, again, for inch and a half and two inch. So the next part of that number is gonna tell us what that fitting's gonna be. So the standard DPC coupling is just gonna be either DSL or DSLF. We don't put anything else on it at that point, and that lets us know that it's a DPC coupling. If it's going to be an SPC coupling, what we're gonna do that part number is we're gonna put an N on the end of it. So that now becomes a DSLN. That tells us to use the impact valve with the female MBT thread to match up with the male thread on the SBC fitting. Okay, the other, the, uh, other thing now that we need to find out is what the entry fitting is gonna be. Is the entry fitting gonna be our standard 
DEB flexible entry fitting, or is that entry fitting going to be the new rigid REF entry fitting? And we determine that with an R. If it's a standard DEB flexible entry fitting, we don't do anything to that number. We leave it as is. If it's going to be an REF, the rigid entry fitting, we're going to put an N, or I'm sorry, we're going to put an R at the end of that part number for rigid. So that part, part number now becomes an R. So for instance, this part number tells me that it's a loop sump, it's poly because it doesn't have the F, it has the N, so it's going to be for the SBC coupling, and it has an R, so it's going to be installed with the rigid entry fittings. Simple enough. So there's uh, multiple different configurations. So if I want just a standard poly loop sump with the rigid entry fitting with the, uh, the standard DPC coupling, that's just now going to become a DSLR. So there's different combinations. You can have a, uh, a fiberglass loop sump with a NPT fitting, also with the, with the rigid entry fitting, or you can have it just with a, uh, a standard DPC and a DEB. So, but you can see how that first number configures the sump with the material of the sump, the type of entry fitting, and the type of fitting that's going to be on the end of the pipe. Move on to the second piece of number, uh, which is pretty simple. That part number is either going to be a 15 for inch and a half pipe, or it may be a 2-0 for 2-inch pipe. Pretty simple. The next part of the number now is going to tell us whether it's going to be an Encore sump or an Ovation sump. For the Encore sump, the next number is going to be an 1836. If this was going to be an Ovation, let's go back down to our poly loop sump with the rigid entry fitting and the DPC fitting. Um, we're going to have an inch and a half pipe but this is going to go into an ovation, that number is going to be 1543. So with these two middle numbers, there's only two variations, inch and a half or two inch, encore or ovation. Okay. Now the last part of the number is where it gets tricky, and this is where we, uh, we get the most questions on how, uh, what is that last number supposed to be. The way we've configured that final number those numbers indicate to us where the pipe is going to come into the sump and where the pipe is going to come out of the sump or where the pipe is going to terminate in that sump. So we've designed this part number to correspond to potentially eight different positions where pipe could come in and out of those sumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These represent entry fittings where they would come in and possibly go out of that sump in a pass through or where it may come in and terminate. And each one of those positions, like I said, has a specific part number. And we start at the bottom. So this position is 1, this position is 2, this position is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now with the Encore, the only time that you're ever going to use position 4 and position 8 is if this is a 4 product sump. Uh, for instance, if you have, uh, you're running three unleaded products, regular, mid-grade, and premium, where you don't have a blend situation, and then you're adding a plus one product with diesel, that would be the only time that you would ever use position four and position eight on the Encore. Position one and five is always going to be your position for the unleaded line for both the Encore and the Ovation. We'll talk about a little bit of that um, a little bit later. Uh, but the, the, the thing to remember here is you will never use position 4 and position 8 unless it's a 4 product Encore. With the Ovations, although we've heard now that the Ovation may be coming out with a 4 product dispenser, in the, uh, but the Ovations right now only have these three product positions, so in an Ovation you would never be using position 4 and position 8. You would only be using position 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7. Now the way the Encore is set up, these products are not on center. So your unled premium plus one are all slightly off center. In the case of the Ovation, if you took this away, your premium is going to be in the center and then your unled or your plus one are going to be 10 half inches off center from those positions. So uh, again, really the only positions that you're probably going to be dealing with are one, two, three, five, six, and seven. So the biggest problem that most people have when they're trying to configure these sumps is they get all caught up with A sides and B sides. Well, where's the A side going to be? Where's the B side going to be? Where's the, uh, where's the electrical junction box going to be? 
well, I don't know. I can't tell by the drawing, you know, where the A side and the dispenser is going to be. I don't know if they're flipped. You know, I don't know what the orientation is. So what I'm going to teach you is an easy rule of thumb that you don't have to worry about A and B sides at all. The only thing that you need to know when you have that drawing is where is the unleaded line running? As long as you know where the unleaded line is based on where the unleaded tank is, as long as you know where that unleaded line is run, you can configure the rest of the part number based on that and you won't have to worry about A sides or B sides or the orientation of the sump. So in all dispensers, whether it's an Encore or an Ovation, your unleaded always, always, always comes in either position one or position five. It's a, if it's a pass through, it'll come in one and out five, or it could potentially terminate at one or come in and terminate at five. So if you keep that in mind, or what I like to call this lower left hand corner, if you always use the lowing left, left hand corner as your starting point at position one, you can configure your sump number starting from that position. So let's take a couple, uh, look at a couple examples of some basic layouts and I'll show you what I mean. So this is a very standard setup. Got three dispensers all in a row. We'll start with, uh, I have two tanks down here. Um, we'll say that this is going to be my unleaded tank and this is going to be my premium tank. Okay? For this example, let's run our unleaded line up the side here. We'll terminate here. Then we'll bring our premium in, knowing that our premium is always going to end up next to our unleaded and we'll bring it up here. And I've drawn this uh, as an encore where they're basically off center. If this would have been an ovation, that premium would have actually been right down the center. So, first thing I do is I look for my unleaded line. I see my unleaded line is here. I see it's entering this lower sump, the lower corner here. So I know that this is going to be position one. And then I can go from there. I know that that's position two. Going back to my diagram, I know that this is a position five and this is a position six. So in this case, let's say that um, this is an Encore. We'll just use a DSL with DPC couplings and standard um, DEB entry boots. This part number, and this is going to be inch and a half pipe since we only have uh, three dispensers. So this part number here is going to be a DSL-15-1836. And I'm going to continue over here since I ran a room. But it's going to be a 1, 2, 5, 6. Because I'm coming in 1, going out 5, coming in 2, and going out 6. I come up to my next sump. It's configured the exact same way. So this also is going to be a 1, 2, 5, 6. Now I get to my terminating sump. I know my unleaded line, lower left hand corner, comes in 1, and my premium is coming in 2. So this will be the same part number carries up. The first three numbers will be exactly the same. And then the final set of numbers with this is simply going to be a 1 and a 2. Again, I don't care if this is A side, if this is B side. I know from my drawing ahead of time that my unleaded line is going to be to this side of the dispenser. Now let's take it one step further. Say that I have a third product over here. I have a diesel. Actually, well, let's, um, let's put this diesel over here so we're not crossing any lines. So say we have a diesel and that diesel is going to come in and feed my first dispenser, come through and then feed my last dispenser. All right. So now I know my plus one always comes in at either the three or the seven position. Because again, I've only had three products, so I'm not worrying about four and eight. So this is three and this is seven. So now this part number becomes a one, two, three, five, six, seven. This is still a one, two, five, six. And now this is no longer a one, two, but it's now a one, two, three. Pretty simple. All right. Let's take a look at the same dispenser layout, but our tanks are going to be maybe set up slightly differently. Let's say in this case, the way my tanks are in the tank field, that my unleads over here, my premiums here, and my diesels here. Okay, we want to try and prevent lines from crossing if we can. If they cross in the tank field, it's not a big deal, but uh, usually we try and keep them from crossing. So if my tanks were laid out unlead premium diesel in this position, I want to run my unlead to this side of the dispenser box, not to this side. So I'm going to bring my unlead up this side, 
My premium is going to come right up next to it. We won't worry about the plus one now. So, my unleads over here. Again, I know my unled always starts at position one in the lower left hand corner. Now, you just got to kind of vision this on 180 or turn the page upside down or stand on your head if you have to, whatever you have to do to try and visualize this. But my lower left hand corner is now down here. So now I know that this is position one. This is position two. This would be three and so on. This now becomes five, six, and seven. So again, I've always looked for that lower corner where my unlead is going to come in as my position one. So this sump is going to be a one, two, five, six. The two pass-through sumps are easy because they mirror each other. So they're always going to be one, two, five, six, no matter the orientation of what side the pumps, the, the pipe's coming through. But where people get in trouble is with the termination sump. Um, when a lot of people will look at this and they'll start here and they'll go one, two, three, four, but I know my unled only comes in at one and five. My unled does not come in over here, so this cannot be position one. So this is not a three and a four. There's no such thing as a three and a four. I know my position one starts up here, so this can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is not a one, two. It's not a three, four. This is actually a five, six, right? This is position one, two, three, potentially four, position five, position six, position seven, and potentially with the four product, position eight. So let's put the plus one in this mix as well. Let's say that uh, my diesel is only going to uh, go to my first dispenser. So my diesel is going to come up and terminate here. Okay. So again, someone may originally look at this and say, okay, that's a, that's a two, three, four, um, seven, eight. No, it's not. We always start with one. And where this becomes important is we know that this comes in at the seven position. So we know which way, which side to put that entry fitting in and what side to angle the termination on that loop system on the, on the bottom valve. So this part number now becomes a one, two, five, six, seven. And I'll show you the quick difference. Say for some reason we had a diesel tank over here and we came in this direction and we terminated here. This would be a one, two, three, five, six. So you can see the difference in the two plus ones. And a lot of times these will get mixed up when people order them and we'll get the call, hey, my impact valve is pointing the wrong way. My entry fitting is on the wrong side. Well, they didn't match up where their unlead was going to be and where that plus one product terminated. So again, unlead always comes in and out of one and five and then draw everything over from there. Okay, let's look at another uh, very common scenario. Here we have three dispensers in two rows. Um, for this, let's just start with our, uh, I'm going to say that this is my premium tank and this is my unleaded tank. Okay, so uh, a very common thing to do here is to split these lines, feed three dispensers with one line and feed the other three with the other line. So I'm going to bring my unlead up here, I'm going to bring, bring my premium here. Now in this case, um, I want to keep my dispensers oriented in the same position. So I want my A side to be consistent with these three and these three, so I'm going to bring my unlead from here over this side and I'm going to bring my premium here over this side. Okay? So, let's look at the configuration that we have. Again, I know my unlead always comes in at one and five. So if I look for that lower left hand corner, it's right here, I know that's my position one. That's a one, two, a five, and a six. This one's a mirror, it's going to be the same, one, two, five, six. Similar to what we had on the other page, um, these terminate at five, six. And I basically have the same thing over here. Um, so now we'll add the plus one product. So let's bring the plus one. We're going to bring it through here, it's going to pass through here and terminate here. This now just became 
a one, two, three, five, six, seven. And this now became a five, six, seven. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See the difference in that? All right. So we've got the same configuration, but let's say for some reason, um, here's, here's actually a good example. This is going to be a stage two location, and we have to run stage two piping out of these dispensers. So what we want to do is bring our product lines to the outside because we're going to run we're going to run stage two piping into a trunk line and feed it down to our unleaded tank. All right. So with this scenario, what we want to do, I probably should start to use colors earlier. Um, we're going to run our unleaded. It's going to come up here. And now, instead of coming up that side, my unlead is now going to come up this side. My premium is going to come up here. And now my premium is going to come over here. So, I start this sump here. Where's my unlead? My unlead's here. I know it comes in and out of position one and position five. So that's easy. That's a one, two, five, six. This one's similar. That's also a one, two, five, six. Now up here, again, my unlead comes in position one, so I know that this is actually a one, two. Okay, I come over here, same situation, it's the mirror image. I know that I can get away with a one, two, five, six. This is gonna be a one, two, five, six. The other biggest mistake we see is people will call out a one, two here. Well, this isn't a one, two. If you get a one, two, it's gonna be configured this way. This is not a one, two. My unlead is here, so I know it comes in either one or five. So this is actually a five, six. So you can see the difference between ordering a one, two and a five, six. They're turned around completely different and oriented and assembled with, uh, uh, on different sizes of sumps with the 45s terminating in different locations. If we wanted to add a plus one, bring in a diesel. We're going to split that diesel, bring in these two sumps. So this sump now becomes a one, two, three, five, six. But this one here, it's not a one, two, three, five, six. This is a one, two, five, six, seven. So you can see the difference in the two configurations on the plus ones. Again, start with your unlet at one and five and configure everything away from there and you won't have any problems. Let's look at another, uh, another common scenario. We have dispensers oriented in this position. So we'll have an unleaded tank, and we'll have a premium tank. So in this scenario, um, I wanna keep my dispensers oriented the same way, my A side's on the same, on the same position, so I'm gonna bring my unleaded through here, I want it to come in the same position, so these are oriented the same. So this is now going to come in here. The only problem with this scenario is when I bring my premium in, I have to cross the lines and bring them in this way. Again, not a big deal. Um, you just have to know that ahead of time. So my unlead comes in here, so I know that's position one. That's position two, position five, position six. So I know that that is a one, two, five, six. Here, I know I'm coming in at one. This is my unleaded, so I know that this is a one, and that's a two. So I know that sums a one, two. Now, let's say we have the same scenario, but for some reason, the contractor or the engineer who's ever setting up the site does not want to cross these lines. So I'm going to bring my unleaded in here. I'm going to come over here. And now I have to come here in order to run my premium line in here, here, and here. This sump's the same. It's just flipped. This is my position one. 
position two, position five, minus six. So that's a one, two, five, six. But now up here, I'm coming in up over here. So I know my unled is either a one and a five. If I look at the sum, where's my lower left-hand corner? It's down here. So I know that's a five. So that must be a six. So in this situation, that becomes a five, six. So you can see the difference. So you really need to know ahead of time, you know, again, whether this is a, uh, an engineered set of drawings that has the piping laid out or the, the piping layout is drawn up on a bar napkin. Uh, before you order the part number, you need to confirm with the guy that's actually putting the pipe in the ground, you know, how is he going to run that pipe? Is he going to cross the pipe because he wants to keep the dispensers oriented the same way? Or he doesn't want to cross the pipe, so he's going to flip these 180 and uh, go in this position. Kind of a similar situation here. Um, let's see, let's go with, uh, well, we'll start with unlead on this side and we'll put premium here. Um, unlead's going to come in here and here. And now again, we're going to loop over and feed these four. So here again becomes a choice. Do I want to keep these oriented the same way and bring that pipe in down like this? Premium comes in, now I have to cross, come in and terminate here. My unlead, that's my position one, that's an easy one, one, two, five, six. This one's the same way, one, two, five, six. Even this, this one, uh, same orientation as this, so that's a one, two, five, six. Here, I know that this is my unleaded line, so I know my one and five has to be here. There's my, there's my corner that I uh, start out, so I know that's a one, so this must be a five, six, okay? But again, for, say, for some reason, maybe they want these product lines on the outside, they don't want to cross these, so they're going to bring the unlead in. Instead of crossing these, we're going to come in down this side. My premium is going to come over and come down this side. This is still a one, two, five, six, but now this is no longer a five, six. This becomes a, we flipped it, my unlead is here, so now this position must be a one, making that a two. So now with this situation, that part number has now become a one, two, instead of a five, six, as the pipe orients in there. So again, as long as you know where that unleaded line is gonna go, that's gonna tell you where to start the positioning. So, you know, what, what determines, you know, what side that these pipes may be run on. Um, th there's a lot of different things that determine that. Uh, some people like to put the plus one product lines to the, uh, to the outside versus on the inside here. They may bring the, the plus one over here. Like in this situation, you know, the plus one's on the outside. Um, or they may want to flip these to keep the plus one over there if they ran there. Uh, in the case where we have three in a row, You know, again, you need to find out what side, what side of this suspension is my unlead going to be running on. Is it going to be running on this side or is it going to be running on that side? Um, you know, in this case, again, you know, maybe the, uh, maybe the store is located here, so they want to run the diesel to the outside. Or the opposite, if the store was there, they may want to flip these. Uh, or they could keep the tanks in the same position, they just have to cross the line and bring the uh, plus one to the outside and bring the unlead and the premium to this side. So as long as you know where that unleaded line is going to be, you know how to begin um, labeling your sumps. So again, look for the unleaded pipe, start with position one or position five and configure from there. If you use that rule of thumb, you should be all set. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, like I said, you can, uh, we have a, uh, a loop ordering brochure that you can uh, order or, or get from your DM. And the, uh, these configurations, uh, the loop ordering brochure can also be found online, uh, opwglobal.com. So I hope this little presentation has been helpful. Uh, happy ordering. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to call your district manager or uh, call your customer service or uh, call myself. I'm Ed Kammerer. And this has been your loop ordering tutorial. Thank you.